tatunenea na tunabariki jina la Bwana kwa hivyo bila kupoteza wakati nilete mhudumu wa kwanza ambaye atatunenea na baadaye tutatambisha kwa hivyo tumgwalia tuhudumie Let's stand on our feet as we receive Apostle Sam Tukura. Ah, tunapopokea Apostle Sam Tukura. From Lagos, Nigeria. Toka Lagos, Nigeria. Karibu. Karibu. Thank you. Asante. A very good morning to us. Mjambo, asubuhi. Um, this is a very serious moment when you come to ministers. Ah, uh, huu ni wakati muhimu sana unaposhughulikia wa hudumu. Satan's work is succeeding on earth because his servants are not failing him. Uh, kazi ya shetani iliendelea duniani kwa wasokuwa wa hudumu hawafanyi kazi vizuri. In fact in most cases Satan has more committed servants than Christ has servants committed to him. Mara nyingi shetani yako na watumishi ambao wamemaanisha kuliko wale wa Mungu. All right, let's Let's move and see how this thing goes. Wacha tuone jinsi ambavyo inaendelea. Give me John. Ah, nipatie Yohana 12:12 verse 26. John 12 Yohana 12 verse 26. Ah, 26. Is the Lord Jesus talking there? Kuna mambo Yesu alizungumzia hapo. What did he say? Alisema namna gani? If anyone serve me. Ikiwa mtu akinitumikia. Let him do what? Let him follow me. Na anifuate. So he is simply saying at that point. Wakati anasema, someone can be serving me but is not following me. Mtu anaweza kuwa ananitumikia lakini anifuati. And this is the tragedy of Christ, Christian ministry. Na sasa hii ndio hatari ya huduma ya Wakristo. That there are many who seem to or claim to serve Christ but are not following Christ. Ah kuna wengi wanasema wanamtumikia lakini hawamfuati. He said if anyone serve me Yaani ikiwa yoyote ananitumikia. Can you give it to me from the Old King James version please? Old. Tuangalie ile, the new. ile ile Old King James. All the scriptures I've been asking for who come from give me keep giving me from the Old King James. Ah tutatoa hiyo KJV. King KJV ya zamani. KJV it's what you you see in your system. All right. If any man do what serve me mtu akinitumikia let him do what anifuate not him me follow me si anaweza kunifuata let him follow me acha anifuate there's no option to that hakuna sehemu ya pili ya hiyo there is no option to following the lord whom you serve hakuna kibadala cha kufuata mungu ambaye unatumikia Because the confusion we are having in the body of Christ all over the world is that many servants of God are growing away from following the master. Watumishi wengi wa Mungu wanakuwa wakienda mbali kukosa kufuata mkubwa wao. Especially as your anointing grows. Haswa wakati wa upako You be tempted to think for me follow yani no. utaanza utaanza kujaribu i'm the one to be followed not to follow somebody mimi ndio ninafaa kufuatwa si kufuata mtu watch it as you become bigger and bigger ukianza kuwa mkubwa na mkubwa as results 
begin to happen. Wakati tunaanza kuona matokeo. As your name begins to become bigger and bigger. Jina lako linapoendelea kukua kubwa na kutukuka. You will be tempted to think how can I be a follower at this level? Unaweza kuwa unajiambia nitafuataje? You may even want God to follow you. Hata utataka Mungu akufuate? And you see that word serve neno hilo kunitumikia is a critical word we must underscore or underline ni neno muhimu ambalo tunahitaji kupigia mustari because ministry may get to a point you begin to think you are no more for service you are no more a servant a huduma hufika mahali ukahisi ya kwamba wewe si mtumishi tena because what is the assignment of a servant of god service kwa sababu lengo la watumishi wa mungu ni ni kutoa huduma not lordship not mastery over people sio kuwa mabwana juu ya watu okay let me show you something wacha nikuonyeshe kitu i'm coming back here nitarudi hapa Let's look at the Lord Jesus. Tuangalie Yesu. Who says what? If Amen. any man serve me, let him do what? Follow me. Ambaye anasema kama unitumikia nifuate. Go to John 13. Enda, enda katika Yohana 10. From verse 2. Mstari wa 2. And supper being ended. The devil now having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot Simon's son to do what? To betray him. Na baada ya chajio, shetani akawa katika moyo wa Simoni Muiskariote kumsaliti. Let's consider the matter now from verse 3. Wacha tuanze mstari wa 3. Jesus knowing what and I want you to take note of that. Yesu hali akijua knowing that what? Ya kuwa number 1. The Father, God the Father had given how many things to him? Now take note of that. Baba how many things? All things. Baba bempa vitu vyote. All things in heaven and on earth. Duniani na mbinguni given all things where into his hands akua mempa kabili vyote mikononi mwake and that he was come from where from Na god alitoka kwa mungu eh? and is about to go back there naye anakwenda kwa mungu what did he do the Ali, next verse alifanya nini he rises up aliondoka he laid aside his garments akaweka kando mavazi yake do you notice the moment you discover how important you are you don't put off your garment you add more garments unagundua ukijua wewe ni muhimu kiasi gani hautoi mavazi unaongeza zaidi he laid aside his garment akatoa mavazi yake and took a towel na akachukua uh, ta, 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 tauro and girded himself na akajifunga after that what did he do he pours water into a basin akamwaga maji katika no, let me ask you a question who is pouring ba, the water bakuli nani anamwaga bak, maji bakulini oh, i don't think you are getting the matter who is pouring water into a basin nani anamwagiria bakuli maji this jesus who is he he is god yeye ni mungu God is taking water and pouring into basin. Anachukua maji anaweka kwa. And carrying towel in his hand. Na anabeba kitambaa kwa mkono. How many things are given into his hands? All things. Amepewa kila kitu. The moment you discover that you have... Now, which minister has all things? Yaani yaani mtumishi gani? Does any preacher have all things? Ni mtumishi gani ana kila kitu? When you realize that you have some things, what did you do? Ukijua uko na vitu kadhaa ulifanya nini? You wanted everybody to serve you. Ulitaka kila mtu akupigie magoti. Okay, let's put it this way. If in the home, kama nyumbani, suddenly you discover you are the husband of this woman. Unagundua wewe ni bwana wa huyu mama. You are the head of this home. Wewe ndio kichwa cha hii nyumba. I built this house. Nilijenga nyumba hii. It just dawns on you who you are. Yaani imeeleweka wewe ni nani? What do you do? Unafanya nini? Do you start cleaning the house? Unaanza kufagia fagia kona kona. Do you go to wash dishes? Unaenda kuosha vyombo? 
you will balance very well on your chest. <coughs> Who is there? Unakaa kwa kiti unakohoa kidogo. Nani yako hapo? But we are talking of God here. Lakini hapo unaongea kuhusu Mungu. What will make God so selfless? Ni nini kitafanya Mungu ajivue ukuu wake? Knowing all things in heaven and on earth. Kwa kujua vitu vyote mbinguni na duniani has been given to his hand. Viko mikononi mwake. He does not only have anointing. Hana upako tu. He has everything. Akona kila kitu. His own anointing is not measured. Na upakwake upakwake. The Bible said in John his God him God gave not the spirit with in in measure. Yaani nasema katika Yohana alipewa roho bila kipimo. Every other preacher all through the Bible and through history God measured his anointing. Ah uh, kila muhubiri alipimiwa upako kiango fulani. Am I confusing you? Na kuchanganya. On the day of Pentecost. Katika siku ya Pentecoste. No single apostle received all the fire in heaven. Hakuna mtume apokea moto yote kutoka mbinguni. Did you see how the Bible wrote Acts chapter 2? It says cloven tongues like as fire. Alikuwa na 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 ndimi kama za moto. You know the meaning of cloven? To divide. Unajua ni kugawa gawa. To cut out. Yaani ni kukata kata. Because no single head could carry all of heaven's fire. Kwa sababu hakuna kichwa kimoja kimbebeba moto wote wa Mungu. to sh- cut it. Mungu lazima angegawa gawa. Peter, kidogo. according to what I've called you for, take your share of fire. Kulingana na ile nimekuitia Petro, chukua John, take your own share. Chukua moto yako kiasi. No man's head could carry all of heaven's fire. Hakuna mtu angebeba moto wote. But the one who has all the fire lakini aliyekuwa na moto wote the one who baptizes us with the fire and the holy ghost hutubatiza kwa moto na roho he is now pouring water inside basin sasa anamwaga maji kwa bakuli am i confusing you here ninakuchanganya hapa because if you are looking for pride kwa kuwa kama unatafuta the best place to find pride is among preachers ah bali unapa ukitaka grade ya kwanza ya kibuli iko na wahubiri How can somebody have all things? Yaani utaweza kuaje na kila kitu. And he came from God. Na alitoka kwa baba. And he's going back to God. Na anarudi kwa Mungu. And your own you only came from Bible school. Na wewe ulitoka tu hapa njokelio. And you don't allow us to rest. Na lakini hatuwezi kutulia. <laughs> oh Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Wewe unaona unaona utumishi hapa? Stop becoming too mysterious. Acha kukuwa mtu ambaye ni wa kiajabu ajabu sana. There is something the Bible writes about Christ, the simplicity of Christ. Kuna kitu Biblia imeandika hapa kuhusiana na uwepesi, urahisi wa Kristo. Okay. You know, we are trying to learn and follow him. Tunajaribu kumfuata. Said if any man will serve me. Kwa hivyo kama mtu atanitumia. Let him do what? follow me anifuata. so we are trying to, because if we don't see him how do we follow him the first need of a follower is sight ni kuona because you can't follow what you don't see kwa kuwa huwezi fuata kile huoni you can't follow whom you are no more seeing huwezi kufuata yule huoni some of us used to see him but you are no more seeing him wengi wetu kwa tunamuona lakini sasa hatumuoni Some of us must say to Satan get thee behind me. Ulikuwa naambia shetani rudi nyuma. No you don't understand. Uelewi. A point comes when, when Jesus said get thee behind me it means Satan has put himself where in front. Wakati aliambiwa na na Yesu arudi nyuma maisha alikuwa mbele yake. And David said I have set the Lord where always before me. Na Biblia inasema Daudi akasema nimemweka Bwana mbele yangu. The moment is no more in front of you. Kama Bwana hayuko mbele yako. You will begin to have a new vision to follow. Utaanza kukuwa na maono mengine ya kufuata si Kristo. Oh. It's time to say get it behind. I want to let the Lord be in front of me. Wacha Bwana awe mbele. I want to see the Lord who has called me into this ministry. Nataka kuona Bwana ambaye ameniita kwa huduma hii. You remember? Unakumbuka? Blind Bartimaeus. Yule Bartimayo kipofu. Sat by the wayside begging. Alikaa pale kando ya barabara. The day the Lord gave him his sight. Siku ile alipewa uoni. The Bible said he followed the Lord in the way. Bili nasema akamfuata Yesu njiani. May we have sight to see the Lord again. Ebu tuwe na maono ya kuona Yesu. 
Because any preacher that is no more seeing the Lord, kwa kuwa mubiri yote ambaye hamuoni Bwana tena, it will reflect in their lifestyle. Itajionyesha katika maisha yao. It will reflect in their message. Itajionyesha katika wanavyohubiri. Ndio. When any ministry is beginning to be different from Christ. Wakati huduma imeanza kuwa tofauti na Kristo. That man is no more seeing Christ. Huyo mtu haoni Kristo tena. All right. Aye. So what did he say here? We, we saw what he did. Mnaona kile alifanya. And he was he began washing the feet of his disciples. Akaanza kuosha miguu ya wale wafuasi wake. Now go back. Rudi to John 12:12 hmm. right. before I go into this let, let's see the lord again I, I hope, don't be angry with me my message is not organized <laughs> you can hear me it's okay let's go here it's because it's not organized bear with me but at the end of the day if we see Christ i think that is enough <laughs> All right. Ah, yeah. Go to Matthew 11. Menda Matthew. We we'll come back to John 12 shortly. Tutarudi baadaye. Matthew 11 verse 28. Matthew 11 That's a, a scripture you know you can remember easily. Sasa hii ni andiko unaweza. That great invitation scripture. Come. Njoni. Unto me. How many? kwangu nyinyi nyote oh, the labor Sumbukao. and a heavy laden na wenye kulemewa and what will happen i will give you rest nami nitawapumzisha let's understand tuelewe jesus in this verse has the ministry the anointing to give how many people rest all yesu ako na upako wa kupatia watu wote mapumziko no matter how anointed you get to be jinsi ambavyo utapakwa mafuta zaidi you don't have assignment to give all people in the world rest hauna uwezo wa kupumzisha watu wote duniani i hope you, you get that natumai umepata hiyo no matter how heavily anointed you are haijalishi una kilo ngapi za upako you don't have the assignment to all people in the world haujatumwa kwa watu wote duniani is that correct hiyo ni kweli all right he who has the assignment and the anointing to give all rest yule ambaye ako na uwezo huo wa kupumzisha watu wote let's check his heart wacha tuangalie moyo wake because one of the ways to follow him is to know his heart kwa sababu njia moja ya kumfuata ni kujua moyo wake verse 29 mstari wa 29 take my yoke upon you chukua nira yangu and learn of me na ujifunze kwangu. So he has a yoke. Kwa hivyo ako na nira fulani. While he breaks the yoke of the devil of our necks, Ana, he has a yoke. Anapovunja nira ya shetani, ako na nira yake. You know what a yoke is? Unajua nira ni nini? It's a piece of wood. Ni kipande cha mbao. Put on the neck of animals that you are going to use to plow ground. Ambayo inawekwa katika uh, bega la wanyama ambao watatumia kulima. Yokes. Nira normally bend an enemy's neck Who, a, a, an animal's neck ah uh, zinapinda shingo ya yule mnyama are we together tuko pamoja now sasa a yoke nira is normally placed on the neck of two plowing animals inaweko katika mabega ya wanyama wawili wa kulima on equal yoking on equal yoking will be kule kuwekwa nira kusiko toshana when you put a cow on one side wakati umeweka ngombe and you put pussy cat on the second side na unaweka pussy upande huu mwingine nira mbili za wanyama wa the yoke will not be equal haitakuwa inatoshana it will not balance haitakuwa na usawa itakuwa imeinama their journey cannot be together kwa hivyo hawawezi enda pamoja the steps of a cow and the steps of a pussy cat are not the same hawawezi kuenda pamoja are we together tuko pamoja all right so god must grow us kwa hivyo mungu lazima atukuze in order for the yoke on his neck and the neck of his servant be not be equal ili nira ya bega lake na la mtumishi wake zitoshane when the servant of god is not growing spiritually kwa hivyo kama hakui kiroho 
Don't think your church growth means your spiritual growth. Ah, uh, usidhani kati umakuzi ya kanisa inatemea ukuzi. Your church can grow but you yourself you are not growing. Kanisa linaweza kukua lakini wewe haukui. You can be learning methods of growing a church but your own personal life is not growing. Unaweza kuwa unakuza kanisa lakini wewe hukui. Oh, am I confusing you here? Ninawachanganya hapa. When we grow, tunapokuwa the more we grow into him in his nature tunapokuwa na kufanana naye the more nae. his yoke is not slanted off our neck hivyo ndivyo nao ni rahet yake haijaninginia shingoni mwetu but that's not my concern lakini hiyo sio ile nalenga is that for i am what kwa kuwa meek kwa kuwa mimi lowly where ni mpole na mnyenyekevu wa, wa moyo How can a man have the anointing anaweza kuja na upako to give rest to how many wa kupumzisha all men watu wote and you check his heart na ukiangalia moyo wake what do you see unaona nini meekness upole loneliness in heart na unyenyekevu ha meanwhile God helped you to give rest to 1000 people. Ah, uh, Mungu alikupatia uwezo wa kupumzisha watu 1000. Your heart is like a mountain. Lakini mwili wako unakaa kama Kilimanjaro. Moyo. I don't know if you are following what I'm saying here. Sijui kama unanifuata. How can a man have so much glory and power? Yaani mtu anaweza kuaje na utukufu mwingi. To give rest to how many? Wakupatia oh, wote. But you go into his heart. What's the state of Lakini his heart? Lakini moyo meekness una unyenyekevu loneliness upole in heart katika moyo look at moses angalia musa the man god used to deliver a whole nation out of egypt alikuambia taifa nzima kutoka misri a man who stretches rod over a sea and the sea opens and there's road for a nation to pass ambaye alinyosha mti katika bahari na kukawa na barabara if you were able to do like that wouldn't you command people to worship you ngoja kidogo kama ungeweza kusimamisha mto ndarugo unaweza kuambia watu wa kuabudu yet lakini the bible said The man Moses was the meekest man on earth. Like the whole world. Ndio alikuwa mnyenyekevu dunia mzima. He was the most powerful man on earth yet meekest. Yaani alikuwa na nguvu sana lakini pia mnyenyekevu sana. That's why he got to and such people be very careful with them. Na watu ambao ni wanyenyekevu wachunge sana. Because it's God that fights for such men. Kwa sababu ni Mungu apigania. When you even your discussion privately against that man, God can arise. Wakati ambapo unaongea kuhusu huko Mungu anaweza inuka. Because meek men hand over matters to God. Kwa sababu watu wanyenyekevu huwa wanapatia Mungu mambo yote. Have I confused you here? How can a man be meek? Mtu anaweza kuaje ni mnyenyekevu. With such ministry results. Na akiwa na matokeo kama hayo. You know why God is not promoting many of us spiritually for greater ministry? Unaona ni kwa nini Mungu hatupandishi leo? The little he gave you. Kidogo ambacho alikupa. You have swollen up. Imekufanya ukwe mkubwa sana. You are no more a servant. Sasa wewe si mtumishi tena. And he said Kasema. go back to that John 12:26 Rudi Yohana 12:26 If any man ikiwa mtu yeyote serve me hata nitumikia let him do what wacha follow me wacha anifuate Do you notice unagundua this follow me message he do he he ujumbe ya kufuata started when he called them the first time ilianza wakati aliwaita When he saw them by the river wakati ambapo what aside catching is uh, Peter alipo alipoita Peter follow me acha samaki nifuate now they have been following him for years wamemfuata kwa miaka and follow me has not ended na bado kufuata hakujaisha so you don't outgrow following the lord kwa hivyo hauwezi kupita kufuata mungu there is follow me at the beginning of your journey kuna kuanza nifuate When he calls you out of the world, and now you are a minister. 
You are now a servant. You are now a man of God, a woman of God. Follow me has not expired. It's even more critical now. Because in this level of follow me, many who you are a minister to are now going to be, like Paul said, follow me as I am following Christ. It's now that you are following me at this level is more critical because it's going to affect the destiny of many others. People who are following you who may not know you are no more following the master. Hmm. That is the danger many members in the church are. Because they don't know better they don't know when their pastor has changed from following Jesus. In fact, in many churches, people don't read the Bible again. They just come and hear prophecy. Don't build your church. Don't build God's people on prophecy. Build them on the word of God. You spend, you see somebody spending hours prophesying on the whole service will end nobody open to any scripture. It has made many members as they are coming to church they don't even come on the Bible again. Because they know that it's prophecy. Prophecy. People come with their bottles of oil and bottles of water. No Bible. Don't build people's lives on water and bottles. Build them on the word of God. The Did I say don't use your oil? I didn't say that. But you see, even the oil matter. How many times did you hear Jesus talk of oil? How many times did you see the apostles talk of oil and water? I didn't even see the water aspect there. You see, the more you live, build people on the word of God, and they have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, that is the real water. There is a water of the word, and there is a well springing up to everlasting life. That's the water of li the living water and the rivers of living waters. These are realities of the spirit. Now, if the people lack it, we will be living on bottles. Jerichans of water. Kama hawana, hiyo ya roho watakuwa wanabeba mikebe ya maji. you here? Alright, let's run quickly. Wacha tuarakishe. If any man serve me, Kama yote let him do what? Nini? Follow me. Anifuata. You know the problem Moses had at the point that God removed him from ministry? Tatizo, ambalo Musa alikuwa naro ndiyo mungu waka mutuwa katika uduma. God told him, take your rod. Mungu waka muambia, chukua uh, uh, ki, uh, muti wako, fimbo yako. And speak to the rock. Na unene jiwe. And what did the rock do? The rock will give his water. Itafanya nini itatoa maya. But what did he do when he got to the rock? Alipofika fale, alifanya he nini? struck it. Water came out. But well, that was the end of his ministry. What was the problem? The people were used to his rod for 40 years already. And God wanted him to move the people from rod to his word. Because if he spoke to the rock and water came out, the people will shift attention from rod to the word. Because God has honored his word above even his names. 
kwa sababu Mungu ameinua neno lake hata kuzidi majina yake no rod must replace the word hakuna fimbo inayofaa kubadilisha no rod as used of god as it is is equal to the word of god imetumika namna gani ambayo inashinda neno la Mungu when moses died wakati Musa alikufa did you see joshua trying to inherit his rod je uliona yoshua akichukua fimbo yake In fact God made sure he was he won't find it. Mungu alihakikisha hata iona kwanza. <laughs> oh Lord of mercy. Oh Bwana wa huruma. Did I confuse you? Mmekuchanganya? Hmm. If any man serve me. Kama mtu yote atanitumikia. Let him follow me. Wacha anifuate. And where I am. Na mahali nilipo. Wherever I arrive at mahali huwa nitafika my follower will arrive there mtumishi wangu pia atakuwa hapo and such servants that are following me as are serving me na wale wananitumikia my father baba yangu will honor them atawaheshimu do you know what it means for god to embark on honoring a man Unajua inamaanisha nini Mungu kuheshimu mwanadamu? It's more than anything any human being can do for you. Ha, yani hakuna kitu mwanadamu aweza kufanyia. The father is holding some honor. Baba ako na heshima fulani. Reserve for those Imewe following his son. Ambao wanafuata mwana wake. Don't miss your own share of Usi that honor. Kose sehemu yako ya heshima hiyo. It's an honor that the father himself Yaani ni heshima ambayo baba mwenyewe gives a man a woman he sees are truly is following his holy son ambaye anampatia yule ambaye anajua kabisa anafuata mwanawe and i want you to see that word is that nataka uone neno hilo any man serve me kama mtu yote anitumikia let him follow me wacha anifuate and where i am na mahali nilipo There are places the Lord has arrived through kuna mahali, life and ministry. Kuna mahali ambapo Bwana amefika that you can find yourself getting there. Ambao utajipata ukiingia. Things you read. Mambo uliyosoma. And you said how did he get here? Alifikaje hapa? You can come there. Unaweza ifika hapa. But how will you get there when you didn't follow him into Lakini the place? Lakini utafikaje kama ukumfuata? You know there are scriptures you read of the testimonies of Jesus. Una maandiko unasoma kuhusu ushuhuda wa Yesu. His ministry on earth. Yaani alipokuwa hapa duniani. Your desire is how do I get here? Na unajiuliza nitafikaje hapa? So if any man serve me. Sema kama mtu yote anitumikie. Let him follow me. Wacha anifuate. Where you read I am. Mahali ulisoma ni You can get there. Unaweza fika hapo. Ndio. Mm. And there is nothing like the father honoring you. Na hakuna kitu kama baba kukuheshimu. Don't seek the seek for the honor of men. Wachana na heshima za wanadamu. Because when you seek kwa sababu kwa mgonjwa honor of men. Heshima ya wanadamu you will begin a life of pleasing the men that should honor you. Ukitafu ukiwatafuta heshima ya wanadamu lazima pia uwafurahishe ndio wakuheshimu. Get that. Let me say it again. Na 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 nitasema hivyo tena. If I want Mutua's honor. Kama ninataka heshima ya Mutua. What must I do? Nitafanya nini? I must honor him. Lazima nimheshimu. Because I, I must please him. Lazima nimfurahishe. If I don't please him, nisipomfurahisha. I can't get his honor. Hawezi niheshimu. The father doesn't please rascals. Yaani baba huwa hafurahishi watu watoto ambao ni wakaidi. The father doesn't just as we do in church and just say anoint and not receive. Everybody just like uba. Nasema kila mmoja pokea pokea na kila mtu anapokea. You are wondering why people are falling down and rising up the same. Na unajua kwa nini watu wanaanguka na wanaamuka vile tu walianguka. Have you forgotten the day Paul was converted? Unasahau siku ambayo Paulo alibadilishwa. So when we were all falling to the ground. Wakati sote tulikuwa tunaanguka. But when they now rose up, how many people rose up that we read about? Ni wangapi walianguka? Waliamuka wakabakoa mabadrika. Oh, you, you don't understand. Hauelewi. It wasn't only Paul that fell on the road to Damascus. Si Paulo peke yake alianguka. You heard Paul giving the testimony of that 
day. Unakumbuka alipokuwa na shuhudia. We were all falling to the ground. Wakati sote tulianguka. He was not the only one that fell. Sio yeye peke yake alianguka. So after falling what did they rise to be? Baada ya kuanguka waliamuka kuwa nini? You know you can be tempted to think that that is successful ministry on his own as people are falling and breaking your chairs. Unaweza fikiria kwamba hapo umefaulu watu wakianguka na kuvunja vunja chairs zako. So you will not be if, even when God is not pushing any throwing anybody down you will be pushing people. Hata wakati ambapo Mungu asukumi watu. Look at everybody is falling. Unaangusha watu chini unawasukuma chini. The question chini. is what did they rise up to be? Walipoamuka walikuwa nini? We are not against falling. Are you with me? Hatuko kinyume cha kuanguka na watu kuanguka. It happens when the glory breaks out. Inafanyika wakati utukufu umeshuka. But lakini after falling baada ya kuanguka what did they rise to be waliamka kuwa nini that is the success of the ministry sasa huo ndio ushindi wa huduma and normally is the word that succeeds in doing that na kwanza ni neno ambalo hukabili is, is the ministry of the word ni ile huduma ya neno that molds the lives ambayo hutengeneza and maisha raising, raises them to kingdom standard na inawapandisha kadi kadri ya kiwango cha, cha ufalme did i confuse you nimekuchanganya I'm not against falling. I hope I, you understand what I'm saying here. Mimi siko kinyume na kuanguka. We've seen this for in the past 40 years of ministry. We've seen this since happen all kinds of miracles happening, but that's not it. Lakini tumeiona miaka mingi ya huduma lakini The miracle si... is not the end of the matter. Sasa a uh, 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 ule muujiza sio mwisho. What was God's intention in Bwana, performing the miracle? Bwana alitarajia nini alipofanya muujiza? If you don't huo. know it, Kama you stop at the miracle. Lazima usimamie pale kwa muujiza. Did I confuse you? Nimekuchanganya. Hmm. If any man serve me. Kama mtu yote atanitumikia. Let him what? Wacha afanye nini? Follow me. Anifuate. Kai. All right. Aya. What is he talking about? Anaongea kuhusu nini? When you go back, ukirudi to verse 24. Mustari wa 24. Okay. okay. Before Aya. I read verse 24. Kabla 24. Go to verse 17. Mustari wa 17. John 12, 17. Yohana 12, 17. The people therefore Bo- basi wakamshuhudia that was with Jesus. Waliokuwa na Yesu. When he did what? Alipofanya nini? When he called Lazarus out of his grave. Alipomuita Lazaro kutoka kaburini and raised him from the dead na wakamfufua the record wakamshuhudia I, i want you to get kai nataka upate hii how did he raise lazarus from the dead alifufuaje lazaro kutoka kwa afu the bible said he called him bila inasema alimuita kai as mighty as elijah and elisha were jinsi ambavyo elijah na elisha walikuwa to raise a small body dead body small boy kufufua mtoto on the body wali walilala pale katika huo mwili oh god jesus lakini yesu is, is call uh, yeah anasema uh, wewe toka toka hey jesus hey, toka razaro it's a call ali alimuita tu with all the anointing of peter akapata petro akiwa when he was upa. when he was to raise tabita that was up back to life wakati he, he alikuwa first, he first knelt down by the alipiga bed. magoti kwanza kando ya tabitha I never saw Jesus kneeling by any case. Si kuona Yesu akipiga magoti popote. There is no case enough for ha. him to to make him kneel by it. Hakuna kitu chochote kilifanya apige magoti kwanza. Not he, he didn't stretch on any dead body. Hata hakujinyosha kwa mwili wote. As anointed as Elisha was. Hata kama Elisha alikuwa na upate. Raising a dead body of a small boy. Kuinua mtoto mdogo. He stretched himself. Alijilaza kwa yule kwa ule mwili. It stretched him. Ili mkaza sana. You can't say well. The, this body. Uwe, uwe mwili. Since it's a, a little child, I can raise this one it's simple. Ah, kwa kuwa huu ni mtoto mdogo naweza muinua, unaweza mfufua. <laughs> death is death. There's no junior death. <laughs> yani kifo ni kifo, hakuna kifo cha, cha watoto na watu wazima. You can't raise the dead by passing the spirit of death. Ah hawezi kufufua wafu kwa kupita roho wa kifo. Oh 
God. <clears throat> you can't say, well, this, this, uh, okay, that, that's the dead body of an adult, this is the dead body of a child. Uh, you handle that senior person. This, this one. This, <laughs> this, this, this dead body of a child, this is a small case. Ah, sasa hii ni case kidogo ya mtoto ndamfufua. You can try and see if it's a small case. Wewe enda uangalie alafu kama inawezekana. As mighty as Elisha was a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. Hata kama Elisha alikuwa na upako mara mbili wa Elijah. Raising that case. Was it a small case? Ilikuwa ni case kidogo ya ku, ya kufufua mtoto mdogo hapana. The first person that went to encounter that case. Mtu mtu wa kwanza ambaye alienda kukutana was, Re, was Reverend Gehazi. Ilikuwa ni Reverend Gehazi alitumwa akafufue mtu. Do you remember Reverend? <laughs> Unakumbuka? He gave his rod alimpatia fimbo yake that's why it's not good to inherit what inherit things and you have not inherited god ndio sababu si vizuri kuridhi vitu na ujaridhi mungu he gave his rod to gehazi alipatia fimbo yake gehazi and Rev- he told you, Ge- reverend gehazi reverend gehazi sikiliza as you are going unapoenda if anybody greets you ukisalimiwa don't open your mouth usifungue mdomo wako just remain focused and be going kwa sababu una, so, nataka ulege unapenda people are greeting reverend gehazi on the road watu walikuwa nasalibia reverend gehazi reverend gehazi how are you eh hey, reverend gehazi habari yako He obeyed all the instructions. Aliti maagizo yote. He didn't greet anybody on the road. Hakusalimia mtu. If anybody greeted him he didn't answer. Hata akisalimiwa alinyamaza tu. People were saying this man is very spiritual now. Ah watu walikuwa wanasema huyu mtu ni wa kiroho bwana. Huyu. We greeted Gehazi didn't answer. Tulimsalimia. This man is in the spirit. Akanyamaza alikuwa katika roho. With a borrowed rod. Akiwa na fimbo ya kuomba. He rode he has no <laughs> ambayo sio yake <laughs> Oh lord eh hey, bwana Can you imagine a man carrying another man's rod that he doesn't know the history of the rod Una imagine mtu akibeba fimbo ya mtu mwingine ambaye hajui historia yake He got there Alifika hapo What a day of disgrace for Reverend Gehazi Ah siku hiyo ilikuwa ni siku yake ya aibu He laid the rod on the dead body of the boy. Akawekea ile fimbo yule mtoto and stood. Alafu akasimama kando. Did anything happen? Kuna kitu chochote kilitendeka. The dead body remained dead. Ilibaki hapo. Mwili ulibaki hapo. The sad thing he took the rod. Kisha akachukua fimbo. Instead of saying oh god. Bado akusema bwana. I have obeyed all the instructions. Nimetii maagizo yote. Why are you not with me? Ni kwa nini hauko na mimi? He took the rod akachukua fimbo and went back to meet his master na akarudishia bwana wake You know in the first place katika hatua ya kwanza when that woman lost her son wakati ule mama alipoteza mtoto she mtoto, went for elisha aliendea elisha and when she arrived to elisha alipofika kwa elisha what did gehazi do gehazi alifanya nini he pushed her away akamtoa nje Reverend Gehazi has no connection of compassion with anybody suffering Gehazi But he wants to do ministry Geza, Gehazi hana huruma ya wote ambao anaweza He knows how to push people anawia. away who come with a genuine cry Kazi yake ni kufukuza watu mbali So when Elisha gave his rod to Gehazi Kwa hivyo wakati Elisha alimpatia fimbo yake I expected the woman to say okay thank God Gehazi let's go Ah nafikiri mama angemwambia asante The woman did not follow Gehazi Mama hakufuata Gehazi. She seems to be saying in her heart. Alikuwa tu na Is it this same man that was pushing me that you are not going to Huyu mtu ambaye alikuwa amenifukuza huyu 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 hapana. The woman remained with Elisha. Alibaki kule kwa Elisha. I know the sad thing. Na hilo ni jambo la kuhuzunisha sana. When Elisha finally when he got collected his rod from Elisha Gehazi. Wakati ambapo alipokea fimbo yake. He went yake. back. He went to that woman's house. Akaenda kwa nyumba hiyo mama. And shut the door na akafunga milango upon himself akajifungia and the dead body baina yake na mwili uliokufa and shot out the woman 
and Gehazi. Na yule mama na Gehazi akawafungia nje. Normally Jesus would take Peter, James and John when he's raising the dead. Kwa kawaida Yesu angechukua Peter na John. He allowed himself to be shot out. Lakini Gehazi alikubalia kuachwa nje. Instead of being there badala ya kuwa hapo to see aone how is my master doing this thing bwana wangu anafufuaje watu yes mm-hmm. okay you know there's a way you, if if like, go go back a second um second kings enda katika wafalme wa pili chapter 4 uh, can get the verse exact and about go to verse 20 let's see where we are mstari wa 20 Go to verse 30. Mustari wa 30. Verse 30. Mustari wa 30. And the mother of the child said as the Lord liveth. Na mama yake yule mtoto akasema kama as I live it I will not leave thee. Na kama aishivyo na roho yako ishivyo si. And he did what? Basi okay, read verse the verse before it was 29. Eh soma 29. Then he said to Gehazi. Ndipo alisha akamwambia Gehazi. Guard up your loins. Jikaza viuno. And take my staff. Chukua fimbo yangu. My rod in your hand. Mkononi mwako. Go thy way. Ukaende zako. If anybody meet you. Ukutana mtu. Salute him not. Usimsalimu. If any ma, anyone salute you. Na mtu akikusalimu. What? Usimjibu. Don't answer. Usimjibu. Are you following the instructions? Unafuata maagizo. Lay my staff upon the face of the child. Ukaweke fimbo yangu juu ya uso wa mtoto. Did the woman follow Gehazi? Mama alimfuata. What the woman saying in the next verse? Alisema namna gani? And the mother of the child said, Is it this Gehazi? Uyu, no, 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 uyu no, no. Gehazi hapana. No, no. <laughs> And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth. Na mama ya yule mtoto akasema kama Bwana ishivyo. As your soul live. Na roho yako ishivyo. I'm not leaving you. Sitakuacha. I'm not satisfied with this reverend Gehazi. Mimi sija. Even though he's carrying rod in his hand now. Hata kama amebeba mkongojo. Simuamini huyu Gehazi. The woman refused to follow reverend Gehazi. Akakataa kufuata reverend Gehazi. And Gehazi passed on before them. Nae Gehazi akaondoka akatangulia. And laid the staff upon the face of the child. Akaweka fimbo ile juu ya uso wa mtoto. But there was neither voice. Wala hakukuwa na sauti wala majibu. Wherefore what did he do? Basi he went again to meet his master. Akarudi ili kumlaki akamwambia akasema mtoto hakuamka. <laughs> mtoto hakuamka. This was Gehazi's opportunity to be spiritual. Huu ulikuwa ni wakati wa Gehazi wa kuwa mtu wa kiroho. Because failure makes us cry to God and say God why? Kwa sababu kushindwa hutufanya tulie kwa Mungu Bwana kwa nini? He went back to his master. Lakini hakulia alirudi kwa 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 Bwana wake. Look at that, the verse before 31. Angalia ile ambayo ime ya mstari wa 31. Verse 31. 31. And Gehazi passed on before the Lord. Not in the child did not awake. So Na, verse 32. Right. There are three and Billy. And when Elisha was coming to the house. Bas Elisha alipofika nyumbani. Behold. Tazama. The child was was dead. Mtoto amekwisha kufa. And what? Amelazwa. Laid where? Kitandani pake. That is another matter. Hilo ni Laid where? Amelazwa wapi? That's the bed he used to sleep. Hiyo ni hiyo tio ni kitanda ambacho alikuwa analalia. That's where he used to rest. Alikuwa anapumzika hapo. Now a point comes ah, when fika. God will allow our generation lay their problem on our bed. Ah wakati ambapo vizazi vyetu vitaweka matatizo yao katika vita. You can't tell a dead body to shift so that you can lie together. Hauwezi ambia mwili umekufa usonge. Must, your sleep must disappear to settle this case. Lazima usingizi uh, 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 wako upotee ndio ufufue kwanza. Verse 33. 33 He went, he went in therefore akaingia and shut the door na akajifungia upon three of them akawafungia nje Aka, akawafungia two means how many wawili two who wawili. are the two himself yeah yeah and the dead body na mtoto where is gehazi gehazi yako wapi the man that should be learning ministry to know how his master is raising the dead Ambaya he allows himself to be shut out akakubali afungiwe nje 
How will he know? Atajuaje the way of the Lord? Njia ya Bwana. The, the, the failure he had that he couldn't raise the boy should have troubled him enough to say, I will see how my master will do it today. Udhaifu wa kushindo kufufua ungetosha aseme nitaangalia kiri ambacho bwana wangu wanafanya. And the, his master, you know, if you saw what the Lord did, what did the Lord do? He would take Peter, James, Ukiona, John. Yesu alichukua Petro, John, they are not taking James, you. Na Yakobo. You must ask for it. Kama hawa hawaendi na wewe lazima ujilazimishe. Yeah. Ndio. And he prayed unto the Lord. Na akamwomba Bwana. All that prayer. Muombi hayo yote. Gehazi is not seeing how his master is praying. Haoni Gehazi haoni jinsi ambavyo Bwana wake anaomba. And he, and he went up na akapanda juu ya mtoto. upon the child. Akajiraza juu ya mtoto. And put his mouth upon his mouth. Akaweka kinywa chake juu ya mtoto. His eyes upon his eyes. Macho yake juu ya macho. His hands upon his hands. Mikono juu ya mikono. This thing stretched Elisha. Hii kitu hii kitu kilimnyosha, kilimvuta sana Elisha. And all that efforts, the body of the baby, the boy only warmed up. Na kwa kufanya hivyo vyote See, and the flesh of the child wax warm. Mwili ukapata joto tu. He has not really come back to life yet. Bado hajafufuka. But there's a progress. Lakini kuna kitu kinaendelea. <laughs> Verse 36. There are no, 35. 35. Then he returned. Kisha akarudi. And walked in the house. Akatembea nyumbani. To and fro. Huku na huku. I was expecting Gehazi to be following his master. Ninetarajia Gehazi awe ndio anamfuata. What is my master doing? Anafanya nini? Men who become like the Lord, they have questions for the Lord. Watu ambao wanakuwa kama Bwana wana maswali kuhusu Bwana wao. They don't wow. just read Bible they say Lord, what are you, what how did you do it? How so me to be Lord muliza ulifanyaje hapa? He went up, to and fro and went up Alibana. and stretched himself upon him again. Akajinyosha tena. And the child sneezed seven times. Na mtoto akapiga chakumara. And the child marasa. opened his eyes. Na akafungua macho. Now look at verse 36. Angalia 36. And he called Gehazi. Akamuita Gehazi. Why did he need to call him? Mbona? He, he called Gehazi and said, "Call the Shunammite. Call Ak- the Shunammite." Akamwambia muite yule mshu, uh, mshunami. You know you know what the bible says he called Gehazi. Kwa nini Bwana sana alimuita Gehazi? If he was if Gehazi was with him there would be no reason to call him. Kama Gehazi angekuwa pale hakuwekuwa na sababu ya kuitwa. Go and call the shunna my woman. Angemwambia enda umuite. Because he's in a distance from his master. Kwa sababu wako mbali. There's a need for a call. Na bwana wake kwa hivyo lazima angeitwa. So all that happened in raising that boy Gehazi is not part of it. Kwa hivyo kile kitu kilitendeka kuvua mtoto Gehazi hajui. Even when he has a record of disgrace, failure in raising that boy. Uh, yes, ta, ako tu na rekodi ya kushindwa kumfufua yule mtoto. Gehazi. Gehazi. Later on the last place we see is that he becomes a leper. Baada yake mwishowe tunaona tu anaishia kuwa na ukoma because he wants the proceeds of ministry that he has not done. Kwa sababu alitaka faida ya huduma ambayo hajafanya. When his master now cleanses a man from leprosy. Wakati uh, yule mtu anaponya ukoma. Say my master has allowed this man to escape. Amekubali huyu mtu aende tu hivi. Eh? So he planned. Kwa hivyo akapanga. And he said as the Lord live it. Kama Bwana ishivyo. I will pursue this man. Nitafuata huyu mtu. <laughs> While others are saying as the Lord live it, I will not leave thee I will not leave the Lord. His own is he will pursue the man you will get something from. Alitaka amfuate apate kitu. He's not the one that ministered healing to the leper. Sio yeye ambaye alimponya. But he wants the process of the ministry. Lakini anataka faida ya huduma. Gehazi, Reverend. Reverend Gehazi. Reverend Gehazi. Ai. Hmm. Let's leave him alone. Wacha tu tumsamee. He could have taken over inherited the anointing of Elisha. Angepokea upako wa Elisha. But he inherited leprosy. Lakini alipokea ukoma. It wasn't wrong to get anything from people you have ministered to. Haikuwa vibaya kupokea kitu. Elisha said to him. Lakini Elisha alimwambia. Is it time? Hu ndio wakati to get this and get that. Meaning wa, there is time for it. Wa kupokea kumaanisha kuna wakati. But because you are not spiritual, you don't La, know the time to take it. Lakini kwa haujakuwa kiroho wakati wako hujafika kupokea. 
Hmm. All right, go back to John 12. Let's run. I'm going to start it up shortly. I Yohana. think I have about 30 minutes or less. Yohana Is that correct? I'll stop at uh, 11.30. Thank you. So I think this clock is correct. Right, so I'm following it. So, if any man serve me, Kama mtu yote, let him what? Follow me. Anifuate. So, we are now trying to trace the Lord from the raising of the dead of Lazarus. Sasa tunafuata bwana kutoka kufufua Lazarus. Verse 17. Mstari wa 17. John 12, 17. 12, 17. Verse 17. Uh -huh. The people therefore Basi, that was with Jesus na yes, when na yes, he the Lord Jesus called Lazarus Lazaro, out of his grave kaburini, so and raised him from the dead na kamfufua, the bar record so how did the Lord raise Lazarus from the dead? Wali, aje, it's a call alim, alim and that means na yu na if he can call somebody out of the grave, he can easily call somebody out of a bare parlor. It's a call. It's a call. There is no realm somebody is he can call the person out of. Yani hakuna, hakuna mahali ambapo mtu hawezi itu kutoka. You remember he said, but you are a holy nation. Second, first Peter 2 verse 9. Uh, wa but you are, nyinyi ni taifa takatifo. Go to that scripture. Enda hapo. But ye are a chosen generation. Lakini nyinyi ni, 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 a royal priesthood. Na, na ukuhani. And holy nation. Taifa takatifo. A peculiar people. Watu wa aina yake. That you show forth. Ili the praises of him that has what? Sifazake aliewaita. Called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Kwa giza How did all kwa, of us come out of darkness? It was a call. That was the first call we answered. Ha, hivyo, hivyo, the second call is ministry, but the first mwitu, call is out of darkness. Wa kwanza ni kutoka kwa giza, wakili, there is no darkness too thick and too powerful to hinder his call. Hakuna giza ku mwito wake. Nothing holds any light that he can call from. Hakuna kitu kimeshika maisha it's a mati, call. Ni mwito. Oh, may his voice of a call go through the minister that Hebu you are. Sauti yake ya mwito ipitie katika wa that as you call, ita, people respond to the call of the voice of the Lord through you. Yo, 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 yo. You know, you, you can get to a point you become a voice for the Lord as Una a minister. Mahali we sauti ya buwana, that his call yani mwito wake, thunders through you. Una koroma kupitia wewe. People darkness is holding. They just hear him calling them through you. Watu anasikia tu akiitwa kupitia wewe. All right, go back to that verse 17. Turudi mstari wa 17. John 12, 17. Let's run. 17, The people therefore watu that was with him. Walikuwa nae, walikuwa nae. Alipomuita Lazaro out of his grave. Kutoka kabulini. Raising from the dead. Akamfufua. Bear record verse wak, 18. Wakamshuhudia 18. For this cause. Kwa sababu the people also met him. Hiyo mkutano walikwenda kumlaki. For that they heard. Kwa kuwa wamesikia that he had done this miracle. Ya kwamba ameifanya ishara. What was the miracle he had done they heard? He called Lazarus who Na had been mujiza, buried for four days out of the grave mujiza, and the man came out. Mujiza wake ni kwamba alimfufua Lazaro. For this cause. Now, okay, sababu, verse, 20, verse 19 now. Kuminatisa. The Pharisees therefore Mafalisayo wakasemezana said among themselves wow, wow, wow. Perceive ye how you prevail nothing? Mwaona kwamba hamfai neno lolote? Behold, the whole world is gone after this Jesus. Tazameni ulimwengu memuendea nyuma, nyuma yake. And that is ministry. Na sasa hiyo ni uduma. That our ministry must see the world go after Jesus. Ya kwamba uduma yetu lazima ionyeshe watu kufuata Yesu. Us. Si kutufuata sisi. Hmm. Ndiye. Right. I, I will leave some matters to tomorrow. Nitaacha mambo mengine ya kesho. Verse 20. Ishirini. And there 
were certain Greeks among them that came up to Jerusalem to worship at the feast. These Greeks they came to one of the disciples of Jesus, Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee and desired him saying what? Sir, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. Now that is ministry. Never rejoice that men are seeing you the anointed and they are not seeing the anointer. Usifurahie watu wanaona wewe mpako wa mafuta lakini waoni anayepaka mafuta. Usifurahie. Hmm. Hmm. So, we will see Jesus. Bwana tunataka kuona Yesu. Pastor Andrew, Philip comment and tell it Andrew. Kwa hivyo Filipo akaja akamwambia Andrea. And again, the two of them Andrew and Philip. Na Andrea na Filipo, they tell Jesus. Wakamwendea Yesu. That some Greeks want to see you. Kuna wayunani wanataka kukuona. Jesus answered them. Yesu akawaji, saying what? Kisema, the hour is come. Sasa imefika that the son of man should be glorified. Ah, uh, sasa imefika atukuzwe mwana wa Adamu. What is he talking about it? Ananena kuhusu nini? That he should be glorified how? Ya kwamba atukuzwe vipi? He explains it in the next verse. Ah, uh, hiyo nyingine hapo chini atuambia. Verily. Amini amini. Verily. Amini. I say to you. Nawaambia. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground. Chembe ya ngano isipangua katika inchi and die. Ikafa it abided alone. Hukaa hali hiyo hiyo peke yake. But if it die, bali ikifa it bring it forth much fruit. Hutoa mazao mengi. Now let's understand the matter. Wacha tuelewe. He called Lazarus from the grave. Alita Alita Lazaro kutoka katika kaburi 17. But like now the Greeks want to see him. Why you nani wanataka kumuona? And they tell him there are Greeks want to see you. Na akamwambia kuna wa Yunani wanataka kukuona. He said no. Sema ah. I'm not satisfied to be alone that can call from the grave. Ah mimi sijatosheka kuwa ndiye tu naweza itana kutoka kwa. I want to raise more kwa. of my type. Ninataka kuinua wengi kama mimi. I don't want to be alone calling from the grave. Sitaki kuwa tu ni mimi naweza itana kutoka kwa afu. I must produce more of my type. Lazima nizalishe wengine wengi kama mimi. I must mimi. die to produce more of my Razima type. Lazima nife nizalishe wengine so kama mimi. Ministry is not successful when you alone can do certain things until you can to produce more of your type. Kwa hivyo huduma haitosheki haijakamilika ikiwa ni wewe tu unafanya mambo fulani. Lazima uinue wengine. Death must you die that you may not be alone doing what you are doing. Ni kifo gani ambacho utakufa ndio usisalie peke yako? It looks successful. Inaonekana imefaulu. When you alone can do those miracles. Wakati wewe peke yako tu ndio unaweza kufanya hivyo. It looks amazing. Inaonekana ni nzuri. When it's only you that can do certain things and people say man of God, man of God. Man Wakati ni wewe tu unafanya kitu watu wanasema mtumishi wa Mungu, mtumishi wa Mungu. The Lord is no 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 no. Ah akasema hapana. If a corn of wheat doesn't fall to the ground. Kama chembe ya ngano haianguki. And die. Na kufa. It abides. I refuse to be alone. Mimi nakataa kukuwa peke yangu. I refuse to be alone doing what I'm doing. Nakataa kuwa peke yangu nikifanya kile ninachofanya. I must die to bring more of what I am. Wengi wakae kama mimi. But do you know what? Lakini unajua nini? Many of us have refused to die. Wengi wetu tumekataa kufa. So that you alone. Kwa hivyo ili peke yako tu. When people need counseling is you alone. Watu wakihitaji counseling ni wewe tu. Everything is you. Yaani kita kitu ni wewe tu. Hmm. Hmm. Let me close the matter. Wacha nikamilishe hapa. So when he now said in verse 20, 26. Wa if any man serve me. Kama mtu yote atanitumia. Let him what? Wacha afanye nini? Follow me. Anifuate. Follow me how? Anifuate vipi? Follow me according to verse 24 of not Ni... being alone but dying to produce more. Kunifuata kwa kufa na kuzalisha wengine wengi. Hmm. And you forget that the day as a minister you physically die. Wakati utakufa kama Because mtuishi. you didn't die to certain things to produce more of your type. The work dies with you. Kwa kuwa haukufa kwa sababu ya mambo fulani. Many great men when they physically die. What happens to their ministry? The ministry also dies. Because they didn't 
tied to certain things to produce more of their type ha, hawa, so the work cannot continue. Hawakufa kwa mambo fulani ndio wazalishe wengine ndio kazi ya Bwana iendelee. Die to the glory of that office. Sasa kufa uachane na utukufu wa ofisi hiyo. Die to the glory of being the only one to be recognized as the anointed man of God here. Kufa die to it. Usitambuliwe tu ni wewe tu umepakwa mafuta. Fall and die to it. Anguka na ufe to produce more of your type. Ili wengi kama wewe wainuke. If you don't produce more of your type, kama uzalishi wengi kama wewe. The day you go the work has gone. Siku ile utaenda huduma nayo imeenda. Mm. Jesus. Yes, so. Ah, Father help us. Baba tusaidie. Help us. Tusaidie. Mm. I see have about 15 16 minutes. Let me, let me see how. Let me see how I go around it. Wacha nione vile ambavyo. But I think I'm not wasting your time here. Lakini natumai sipotezi wakati wako hapa. The African man thinks of himself and not generations coming. Mwanaume wa Afrika hujifikiria yeye binafsi it, lakini it shows even in our political systems. Hata umeona katika Wakati mtu wako hapo ni yeye tu. He is not preparing the next generation. Hawezi kutayarisha kizazi kijacho. And that's what we are doing in the church also. Na hivyo ndivyo kanisa pia linafanya. We are working for ourselves. Tuna ikani sisi peke yetu but most of the labor of the lord jesus lakini kazi nyingi ya yesu was men he had to raise ilikuwa inahitaji yeye kuinua do dis- watu do you discover utagundua he kept those 12 were following him then he would take three out of the 12 aside angechukua watatu wa wale 10 na wawili anawapeleka kando when finally he died and rose from the dead wakati alikufa na akafufuka he went to heaven akaenda mbinguni and sat at the right hand of the father na akakaa kuume kwa baba according to some 110 kulingana na zaburi the lord said unto my lord bwana akamwambia bwana wangu sit down Kaha, at my right hand upande wa kuume until i make your enemies your footstool have you noticed that some some 110 adi, verse 1 the adi lord zako, said unto my lord as the lord god the father said unto my lord the lord jesus baba akaambia bwana apeni yesu sit down where at Kaha, my right hand upande wa kuume until i make your enemies your footstool hadi nifanye adui zako Uh, uh, kiti chako are you with me to that point so while jesus is sitting wakati amekaa the father has a ministry baba ndiye ameshika huduma of making enemies of his kingdom ya kufanya adui wa ufalme wake a footstool kiti cha kukanyaga so wherever there are enemies of christ kwa hivyo mahali pana adui wa kristo they are raw materials for the stool wao ni ni marigafi ya viti vya kukanyaga So the father is a, baba, is a carpenter. Yeye yeah, ndiye yeah, selemara. What are the material he will use to make the food? Marigafi ya kuunda vitu vingi. So adui. wherever you see enemies of the kingdom, Ukiona adui, enemies of Christ. Adui wa Kristo. They are raw materials for the stool. Ni marigafi ya kigoda. He has a seat but no foot stool yet. Ako na kiti lakini hana kigoda cha kuwekelea miguu. The enemies are the raw material. Na sasa adui ndio mali gani? Look at the next verse. Angalia hiyo nyingine. The Lord shall send forth the rod of your strength out of Zion. Bwana ataweka afungo ya in the midst of your enemies. Ya zayuni, Now verse 3. Tatu. Thy people watu wako shall be willing watakuwa in the day of your power watakubali wakati so wa siri ya uongozi wako he now has a people sasa ako na watu he is in the day of his power ako katika he siku ya uongozi wake in heaven nguvu yake ni nguvu na dunia is given to me nimepewa go you therefore enda sasa now he has a people ako na watu but if he has a people kama ana watu but they are not a willing people lakini si watu wanaotaka there's a there's going to be a problem kutakuwa na shida willing to do what kutaka kufanya nini a willing people who we join the father in verse 1 kukubali making sure there's a foot to kuungana na baba kushughulikia adui kufanya wawae viti vya kufanya in any land there are oppositions to the, the kingdom of christ ya kwamba yeyote ambaye anapinga ufalme wa mungu there must be men and women in the day of 
power that Christ is. Lazima kuwe na watu katika siku ya nguvu ya Kristo. To join God the Father. Ya kuungana na Baba. To make every opposition a footstool for Christ. Kufanya kila sida kila. That wherever you are located. Mahali ambapo umewekwa. Jesus must have something to put leg on. Yesu lazima awe na kitu cha kukanyaga. Wherever you are located as a minister. Mahali umekaa kama muhudumu. Opposition and devils. Ah ule upinzani na shetani. Must, must be what Christ puts his leg. Lazima iwe ndio kila kitu ambacho Hakuna kitu kinafaa kuinua kitu. Lazima kuwe na kiti cha Kristo. But lakini as he sat down kama alivoketi when you read Acts chapter 1 ukisoma matendo ya mitume 1 for 40 days kwa siku 44 Jesus kept appearing to the disciples. Yesu alikuwa anatokezea mitume wake. In some case where did he meet them? Kuna wakati. They had gone back fishing. Wameenda kuvua samaki. How could he sit down? Angekaaje chini? When he had no people on earth standing for him. Wakati hana watu duniani wakisimama kwa sababu yake. For many of us. Kwa wengi wetu. Where you are located as a minister. Mahali umewekwa kama muhudumu. The Lord cannot sit down in heaven properly yet. Baba hawezi kukaa vizuri chini Because juu. you are not standing there for him. Kwa sababu haumsimamii hapo. Many ministers are seated in their locations. Wahudumu wengi wamekaa mahali wametumwa. We can have master sitting, servant sitting. Hawezi kuwa na bwana amekaa na watumishi wamekaa. Is that correct? that a master is sitting down servant is sitting down ya kwamba bwana no matin a master is sitting the servant is up doing something bwana amekaa na mtumishi amesimama how could he sit down angekaaje chini when where you are located mahali ambapo uko you have gotten an air conditioned office kama uko na ofisi kwa na air conditioned dead kila wakati you are enjoying position unafurahia nafasi you are not standing for him how musimami he can sit down hawezi ka A master can only sit when there are standing servants for him. Bwana anaweza tu kukaa kama kuna watumishi wanaosimama kwa niaba yake. Let me scratch something and close. Wacha I just have 10 minutes. Wacha nifanye kitu fulani hapa ninapomalizia. Go to Revelation. Enda katika ufunuo. Chapter 3 from verse 14. Hmm. Unto the angel kwa malaika of the church wa kanisa of the Laodiceans wa Rodicia right andika Are you with me to that point? Uko nami hadi hapo. They are going to get a letter watapata barua of a correct message ya ujumbe ambao ni mwafaka that John got from the Lord ambao Yohana alipata kutoka kwa Bwana but go to verse 20 enda mstari and see part of what is written in the letter enda mstari wa 20 unaona kile kilicho what did the Lord say in verse 20 inasemaje behold tazama i stand at the door nasimama mlangoni which door mlango gani the door of that church mlango wa hiyo kanisa he's been knocking ana anabisha You knock on a door that is closed. Unabisha mlango ambao umefungwa. The Lord of the church is knocking on the door of that church. Bwana wa kanisa anabisha mlango wa kanisa hilo. The pastor didn't hear the knock on the door. Mchungaji hakusikia huo mgoto wa mlango. The elders didn't hear the sound of the knock. Nata wa hakusikia mgoto wa mlango. What is that church going to be left with? Kanisa hilo limeachwa nini? A letter. Imeachiwa barua. That John who saw the Lord is bringing to them. Yohana aliona bwana akiwaletea. The church is left with this two things. Kwa hivyo kanisa likimwacha na to only have a letter or have the Lord himself come. Kuwa tu na barua ama kukuwa na bwana mwenyewe. Hmm. 
no matter how good a John is haijalishi ni nzuri kiwango gani no matter how anointed a John is haijalishi umepakwa kiwango gani he is not Christ Yohana atakaye amepakwa mafuta namna gani ana nguvu vipi yeye sio Kristo If Christ Kama entered that church Kristo angeingia kanisa hilo they will have more than the letter wangekuwa na zaidi ya barua because he is the living letter himself kwa kuwa yeye ndio barua inayoishi so the question is kwa swali ni hili what are these church people doing inside that church that Christ is outside wanafanya nini hapo ndani wakiwa wamejifungia na Kristo wako nje a Christless church kanisa lisilo na Kristo but the pastor and the elders and the bishop they are all inside yani viongozi wote na na, na washirika wako ndani but where is Christ like is Kristo wako what's he doing and nobody heard the knock anabisha na hakuna mtu anasikia so he said john i've been knocking nobody heard now write to them kwa hivyo akaambia yohana nimebisha hakuna mtu amesikia sasa waandikie let me say this quickly wacha niseme hii haraka the presence of any minister uepo wa mhudumu yoyote no matter how anointed licha ya kuwa una upako is to prepare the way for christ himself to come into the church ni kutayarishia kristo njia aingie kanisani never you think because you are anointed you are enough for his church ufizifikirie kwa kuwa umepakwa unatosha kwa sababu the revival we are looking for can't happen uvuvio unaotafuta uwezekani in the absence of christ kama kristo hayuko no matter how anointed we are hata kama tumepakwa there's a limit to what can happen kuna kizuizi cha kile when he comes in lakini akija limits have ended yani vizuizi vyote vinaondoka out na kuna kuwa na utukufu but they locked him out why did they lock their door kwa nini walifunga mlango tomorrow morning we we'll continue on that kesho asubuhi tutaendelea bwana wabariki